In a previous video, we defined a kinematic equation that said the change in distance of an object that's accelerating is equal to the initial velocity of the object times the change in time plus one half the acceleration of the object times the change in time squared. We also had another kinematic equation that said that acceleration is equal to the change in velocity per change in time. In this form, we often consider this the definition of acceleration, but we were able to algebraically manipulate this equation to find a final velocity given the initial velocity of the acceleration and the change in time. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to derive the following kinematic equation that eliminates the need to consider the time parameter. And this equation says the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the change in distance. So again, what this equation does and why it's useful is it eliminates the time parameter out of both of these equations. So to find the distance an object travels given this equation, you need to know the time during which the object's traveling. Likewise, to find the change in velocity of an object given its acceleration, you need to know the change in time. Now this equation allows us to eliminate the need to consider the time parameter. And in this session, what I'm going to do is I'm going to derive this equation using this equation and using this equation. So to begin, let's start with rearranging our definition of acceleration. So we said acceleration was equal to the change in velocity per change in time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to algebraically manipulate this equation to come up with an expression for the change in time given the acceleration and the velocity. So the first thing I'm going to do, multiply both sides by delta t. When I do that, this delta t cancels out with that delta t, and what I'm left with is acceleration times the change in time is equal to the change in velocity. Now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by the acceleration. And when I do that, notice that this unit of acceleration cancels out with that unit of acceleration, and I get an equation that expresses the change in time for an object that's accelerating as the change in velocity divided by the acceleration of the object, the rate at which the object is speeding up. So now I have an expression for the change in time given the change in velocity in the rate at which this object's accelerating. Now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this expression which says that the change in distance of an object equals the initial velocity of the object times the change in time, the time during which the object was speeding up, plus one half the acceleration times the change in time squared. Now what I'm going to do is in place of each one of these delta t's, I'm going to make the following substitution. I'm going to put this delta v divided by the acceleration in each one of these expressions. So when I do that, what you should see is that I get the change in distance equals whatever the initial velocity is, and I'm going to do this in a different colors to emphasize the point, I'm going to make the substitution that delta t is equal to the change in the velocity divided by the acceleration of the object. So now I'm going to continue to add the terms in this product so I get one half the acceleration and I'm going to make the following substitution again. Where I see this delta t, I'm going to put delta v divided by the acceleration and what you need to do is you need to square that entire term. Now the next step that I'm going to do that will make this problem a little easier is I'm going to factor out one of these from each one of these terms. So I'm going to pull that out right to the front and when I do that I get delta v over the acceleration and then what I get when I factor this term out of this product I get v initial when I factor one of these terms out of this entire product I get one half times the acceleration times the change in velocity divided by the acceleration now the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few simplifications. I see an acceleration term here, and I'm going to cancel that out with the acceleration term there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this as delta x equals the change in the velocity divided by the acceleration times v initial plus one half of the change in velocity. Now this term right here, this change in velocity term, can be rewritten. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rewrite that as delta v over the acceleration, I'm just bringing this term down, times v initial plus one half the change in velocity, which is equivalent to v final minus v initial. Now the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this one half term to both of these uh, velocity terms. And when you do that, what you should see is you get delta v over the acceleration times v initial plus one half of v final minus one half of v initial. Now the next thing that you should notice is that you have a v initial here 
in a minus one half v initial there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to regroup these terms. And when you do that, what you should see is you get the change in velocity divided by the acceleration it equals one half of v final. All I did was I pulled this term out into the front plus, and I'm going to do this in a different color to emphasize the algebraic step that I'm about to do, this v initial minus one half this v initial. And now what you should see is that we can make another simplification. So I'm going to just rewrite this as delta v over the acceleration times one half of v final. And now when you combine these two terms, you get plus one half of v initial. And now what you can do is you can factor out a one half term out of both one of these two terms. And when you do that, what you should get is one half of the change in velocity divided by the acceleration times v final plus v initial. And now the next step to do is to expand this delta v term. And so you can rewrite this as one half times delta v, which is v final minus v initial divided by the acceleration. And this is going to be times v final plus v initial. And what you should see is that now becomes the difference of two squares. And so you can rewrite this as one half, and I got to factor out this one over a term times v final minus v initial. I'm just rewriting this to really emphasize that these are the difference of two squares. And when you do that, what you should get is this equals one half of one over a, one over the acceleration, times v final squared minus v initial squared. This is the difference of these two products here. And so if you recall way back to the beginning, this is all equal to the change in distance. And now what you can do is you can multiply both sides of this equation by two times the acceleration. So what you do to one side, you do to the other side. And what you should see is this two cancels out with this two, and then this acceleration cancels out with that acceleration. And you're left with two times the acceleration times the change in distance equals v final squared minus v initial squared. And now the last step that we usually do to rewrite this equation is to add v initial to both sides of v initial squared. What you do to one side of an equation, you, you do to the other side. And when you do that, what you should get is v final squared equals v initial squared plus two times the acceleration times the change in distance. And this is our last kinematic equation.